Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inuzor Education. Um, I would like to consider yet another um, statistical problem where we will try to um, establish certain uh, probabilistic distribution of the random variable based on some statistical um, data. This is um, so-called task C, as I call it. Um, the task C is actually when um, the um, random variable has a uh, continuous distribution within certain reasonable boundaries and we know the statistics uh, from the values of these of this uh, random variable which it took uh, through a certain period of time. Now um, as you see we have lots of numbers here so I will actually do the practical part of this more than theoretical. The previous lecture with um, discrete distribution I was actually doing a lot of uh, theory of probability stuff with variables, uh, uh, means, etc, etc. Here I will just do exactly the same but I will just present the numbers as, as they are. I assume that all the manipulations which, which are needed to produce these numbers um, are known to you and you can use obviously Excel spreadsheet, which I did, to, to calculate these values. So, um, let me tell you about exact practical situation. Well, everybody is talking right now about climate change, about um, rising temperature, rising level of uh, uh, sea level, uh, and I ju just, just wanted to verify whether these claims true or not. So. Um, I found uh, the website where information about the sea level um, was uh, provided. Uh, it's um, University of Hawaii. I referred to this site in the notes to this lecture on unisor.com. And um, so what I did was I took two points. Um, one point is in California and another uh, is uh, Atlantic City in New Jersey. Um, so one is Pacific Ocean Coast, another is Atlantic Ocean Coast. Now, this website, which I just talked about, provides daily um, levels of the sea level. Um, I think it measured at noon every day, almost every day. I mean, there are some gaps, but statistically it's insignificant. So at noon every day, um, in California, it's from 1933 uh, till 2014, and uh, in Atlantic City, it's from 1911 to 2014, so it's basically a century. Um, and then I just made whatever the necessary statistical manipulation with these data I could do, uh, including um, the distribution of uh, the probabilities among certain intervals which I will just uh, explain what it is and let me just basically jump to the end of it the conclusion what's interesting is that um, there is no statistically significant rising of the level of the ocean in California um, it's practically on the same level throughout the whole period from 1933 to 2014 at the same time the Atlantic coast in Atlantic City, New Jersey, there is definitely statistically significant rising of the water. Um, approximately it rose by something like 400 millimeters in a century. So it's about four, milli four, millim four millimeter a year, something like this, four or five millimeters a year. Um, whether it's significant or not, um, it's not up to me to decide. Whether the trend will or will not continue in the future, nobody knows. And if anybody tells you that they will definitely know that this will continue, um, that's not the fact. Uh, there is no theory which would basically uh, provide the basis for this conclusion. But whatever did happen, up to what, 2014, that, that's the data where I have. Um, it, 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 def it definitely did happen and the, definitely, um, the water was definitely rising 
uh, slowly but surely during an entire century. So I understand people who are assuming, and that's reasonable, that this process will continue, well, uh, until it slows down and maybe will stop uh, completely, or maybe not. Nobody knows, actually. But I do understand people who are claiming this. But at the same time, uh, I would like you to pay attention to the statistical uh, results for California coast. There is absolutely no um, increase uh, in the level of um, Pacific Ocean, at least in that particular place. All right, so what did I do with the data? So, as you see, here are decades, basically. It's 10 years, 10 years, 10 years. Well, except the first one is 13 years because it's the beginning of the, um, uh, of the, of the data. So it's 13 years and then everything else is 10. So what I'm doing is I'm averaging results during a decade. I have results for each day, or almost each day, within this period of 10 years, which amounts to more than 3,000 um, elements of data, which is significant amount for statistical research. And then I am calculating certain statistical parameters for each particular decade based on daily information which uh, is available. So, by the way, this spreadsheet is also um, on my website and you can download it from uh, the website. The reference, again, is in the notes um, for this lecture. So the first column is the average for a decade. As you see, the average in the first decade, in 19, around 1920, was uh, 1890. Uh, it's in, mil in millimeters relative to certain uh, level, whatever the beginning of their scale is. And as you see, gradually it's increasing from decade to decade. Monotonically, actually. I mean, that's kind of unusual. But there is a monotonic increase in the average. Now, well, can it be an accident? Well, in theory it can, if the distribution is very wide. Now, is this a wide distribution? Well, it's very easy to check. I got the standard deviation within each of them. And as you see, standard deviation is practically the same throughout the whole history. And if you will take two sigma, for instance, two sigma is approximately like 300 or 320, whatever. It's definitely uh, less than the difference between these two averages, right? Which means that this average is statistically significantly different, in this case greater, because it's above the two sigma around this value, right? So, um, what I can definitely say that there is a statistically significant, with, the cer with certainty greater than 95%, that there is an increase during this century between the average decade temperature in the beginning of the 19th century and in the beginning of the 20th century. Statistically significant with a uh, certainty of greater than 95%. So that's my standard deviation. Now then, within each decade the, temp uh, the uh, sea level obviously was not like a straight line. It's a little bit above average, a little bit below average, etc. Et so, I can actually calculate the slope of this distribution within each um, decade. And obviously, since my average goes from decade to decade up and up and up, I should expect that there is a slope, which means slight I mean positive slope, which means slight increasing within each decade. And yes indeed, as you see, this is positive, this is positive, this is positive. There is only one decade which seems to be a little bit negative, um, but doesn't really significantly disturb the whole picture. As you see, all the slopes in all these decades are positive. And in one case it's really very it, it's much bigger than others. You see, this is like 5% slope, which is a lot. This is one and a half, two, two and a six, one and a half. I mean, all others, except these two, are relatively on the same level. By the way, the slope has diminished. As you see, this, this, and this, it's less. 
than whatever it was in 1960s, 70s and, and, and 1980. Um, what's next? Well, next is minimum and maximum value uh, within um, each decade. Now, as you see, the first decade has minimum and maximum from 966 to 2801. And then all these minimums are rising and all the maximum are, well, not exactly monotonically, but still you see that they are rising. So, um, again, it's just a confirmation that um, the, the, the sea level is rising. And then I made um, certain calculations to get statistical distribution among different levels. You see, this is the level from minimum to 1460, then from 1460 to 1970, etc., etc., up to 3500. Because these are basically, uh, th these values encompass my minimum and maximum. Minimum is 966, maximum is 3392. So I got it from like nine, nine, 900 or 950 uh, up to uh, 3500. And then I have put the number of um, statistical observation which falls into each of these categories. So as you see, most of the statistical distribution in the beginning of the, uh, of the 20th century was in this area from 1460 to 1970. A little bit less, well not a little bit, half of that was in the next interval. And then as the time goes from decade to decade, the whole volume is shifting from this to this. So the number of values which are falling below, let's say, 1460, is actually going down to zero. And this number, below 1970, is also, generally speaking, in de decreasing, while this number, which is the next category, is increasing. So we are observing the shift of the distribution of probabilities from lower level to a higher level. So it's more frequently occurring now in the higher category than the lower. And same thing happened with this one. This is even higher category and it also shifted upwards. So the observations are moving to the right towards the greater um, uh, sea levels, higher sea levels. And then the last category is not actually very populated at all. So basically most our observations are concentrated in these three categories. And there is a definite shift from this category to these two during these centuries, uh, sorry, decades. So that's the story about New Jersey. I did not put the numbers, there are similar numbers uh, for California coast, um, but the numbers are completely different in their quality. Um, it me, uh, which, which actually means that the average is relatively the same. And again, you can download it from my website, which I'm referring to in the, in the notes on unisor.com. And you will see that basically the average stays relatively the same. Standard deviation, as in this case, is more or less the same. Slopes are in some cases positive, in some cases negative, but very, very small slopes and there is no like, general um, uh, observable rising of the sea level uh, in California. Then again, the minimum and maximum are relatively the same as we move from decade to decade in, uh, on the California coast. And the distribution is also relatively the same. Well, now, um, can I make any kind of a projection for the future? No, absolutely not. But I do observe the situation as it is right now, that the level of the uh, waters and the ocean in Atlantic City is rising, about four uh, millimeters a year on average, and in California it's not really observed at all. Is it related to global warming, climate change? 
I don't know, nobody knows, and there are so many factors which are actually um, influence, for instance, the rising of water uh, in, uh, uh, in Atlantic City, uh, the direction of the, uh, of the winds, for instance, like general direction, which might have changed. I mean, you can always say that this is a climate change. Yes, uh, climate is always changing. Um, is it related to um, uh, human activity? Well, everything is related in some way or another. The question is by how much. Um, the uh, Gulf Stream is slightly changing its direction, um, as I've read in one of the articles, which also contribute probably to this rising um, of the water. Uh, so there are many factors, and I'm not going to um, fantasize about which which is exactly the most important, etc. Um, but this, whatever whatever it is here, is is just a pure mathematics, uh, pure statistical calculations, which we can definitely um, say it confirms that in 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 one particular spot uh, in Atlantic City and, and Atlantic Ocean. Um, the the waters are rising and it's confirmed again absolutely statistically correctly that there is no similar activity on the Pacific coast uh, in uh, California well that's about everything which I wanted to to present to you what I think is very important is for you to basically repeat these these calculations yourself they're not difficult and if you know how to use Excel that would be even uh, simpler. Uh, so just download the raw data um, from the site which I provide on unizor.com website. Um, download them, uh, put them into a spreadsheet and try to manipulate with this uh, to, to get the average, to get the standard uh, deviation and, and some other things, whatever you can. Um, it will take some time. It took some time for me, by the way. But I think it's very important to, to have um, the, um, your own personal understanding of what are these processes and how they're happening. Um, don't get involved in any kind of a speculation about the reasons because it's very, very complex um, uh, subject. But you can definitely say that statistically something is confirmed or statistically something is not confirmed or statistically confirmed the opposite or something like this. So statistically is confirmed for instance that there is a rising water in Atlantic and uh, there is absolutely no uh, such effect in, in Pacific Ocean. That, that's, that's about it. So with this recommendation I would like to uh, finish this lecture. Um, I wish you really spent some time and familiarize yourself with the techniques which allow to to calculate all these numbers it's really very very helpful and you will probably see in a different light whenever somebody is just putting in article some statements which probably cannot be confirmed statistically and they represent somebody's uh, subjective opinion which is fine but subjective opinion should be treated as a sub subjective opinion. This is objective. So I would urge you to always think about whether there are some facts and statistical calculations which really prove that or th or this or that particular subjective um, opinion. Or maybe it's just an opinion based on some graph and as you understand the graph can be presented in many different ways with the scaling factors, etc., which basically distort the impression the numbers do not lie if they are calculating, uh, calculated correctly. The, the visual presentation, like a graph or something, it can be distorted using uh, some scaling um, um, uh, of, of the graph. So I would uh, urge you to, to very carefully approach these opinions based just on look of the graph numbers are much more important and for this you need to really understand how they are derived well that's it for today for today thank you very much and uh, good luck